These roots are real. Wow. Oh my goodness. Moss ASMR. Ooh, the black or the blue. Hello guys. Today I'm going to be doing a lot of plant care to prepare for spring. Since things are warming up and the sun's out longer, my plants are growing a little bit faster. In preparation for spring, I'm going to be doing a lot of repotting, fertilizing, and other plant things that I've been putting off. For something like fertilizer, it's good to keep track of when you last applied it so you don't think to yourself, did I fertilize this plant? In one of my previous vlogs, I started to use Notion to plan out my days and that's honestly been such a game changer for me. And then a few weeks after I posted the video, Notion reached out and they wanted to do a sponsorship. So I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Notion. I really like doing sponsorships like this where I actually use the product before the company reaches out to me. I was never one to plan anything like all throughout high school and college. I would just count on my memory to remember test dates, when to enroll in classes, when stuff was due, and that would cause my thoughts to be all over the place and I was extremely disorganized. I know that a lot of people approach planning as a method to improve productivity, but for me, it's more about feeling more organized, less stressed, and just generally in control of my daily life. Like just knowing what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow frees up a lot of space in my head. I'm someone who's attempted to plan multiple times. I've probably purchased like around 10 journals in my lifetime that I used for maybe a week and never touched again. With physical planners, I always struggled with it feeling inconvenient, so I never really used them consistently. So what I like about Notion is that it works on my phone and on my laptop, so it makes it a very convenient tool to use. I use it to keep track of important events in my personal life as well as my work life. So things like my friend's birthday party or when I need to film or when I need to edit or even when I need to post a video um, and also with plant care which is what I'll show you guys today. I have all of that stuff in my Notion to refer to. My most used feature in Notion would have to be my daily to-do lists. In my daily to-do list, I have tasks that I just need to do throughout the day and I include Monday through Sunday on there. In my event calendar is where I keep important things like events or things that I need to do farther in the future and then when that week comes, I add that stuff into my daily to-do list. I like to keep planning simple, but I know some people like more complex methods, but that's what's great about Notion is that it is fully customizable. You can sign up for Notion using the link in the description. And now let's get some of my plants ready for spring. I made a list of all of the plants that I have. So I walked around my apartment and my balcony and I wrote all of the names down in a table or a database in Notion. And it's kind of cool because I never knew how many plants I actually had because uh, I've never been one to really count and I have less than I thought I would have. I have around 100. I'm gonna write down the date of when I either repot the plant or when I fertilize the plant. It'll just be nice to have this as a resource and then what's really cool about the database is that I can search in it so I can look up the plant that I'm wondering about and then see oh I last repot this plant um, March 12th of 2022. So I know when I last did something, which I've never really known before. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I also made a plant to-do list because sometimes I forget what I want to do with the plant. So right here, I wrote down which plants I'm going to repot today. And then other things like Ikea cabinet cleanup or wipe and clean leaves and collect leaves for the worm bin. It's just nice to have something like this so I can quickly write down a thought that comes up in my head and then have it somewhere written down. So the first thing that we are doing is repotting a couple of my plants. The first one on the list is my Anthurium serenoi. I've never actually had to say that word out loud, so I thought it was right there, but... Oh, it's right here. Yes. I am going to be repotting this Anthurium into this Vanda basket. I set up this table where I'm gonna be doing some repotting and it's kind of fun because I've never done a repotting video. These are some of the pots that I'll be using to repot with today. Also, I wanna see Theo. <laughs> Theo is chilling out on the couch. Look at how cute he is. Next to my laptop, he's so tiny. He's tired for the video. <laughs> no barking. I do get questions about like fertilizer and soil mixes. So if you're curious about that, then stay tuned. 
A semi-recent purchase is this repotting mat. Whenever I deal with plant stuff, I'm very messy, so that's also why I've been hesitant to do a repotting video, because whenever I do stuff like that, it's always extremely messy. It reduces the mess, but does not eliminate it. When I bought it, it was just in this purple pot, which is very cute, but not ideal. I really like these strappy looking anthuriums with long leaves. This sphagnum moss seems very old, like really shredded up and it looks like it's been decomposed a little bit. That's what happens with uh, sphagnum moss over time. Um, so I'm going to remove this stuff and then I'll actually use this for my worm bin. Sphagnum moss does have some sustainability issues. So I try to get my sphagnum moss from reliable sources like um, Best Grow New Zealand brand. Their quality is just better too. But this sphagnum moss that I'm taking off right now, I'm going to be using for my worm bin. So yeah, I try to be um, very, what's the opposite of liberal? Conservative? Yeah, I try to be very conservative with my sphagnum moss usage. This plant has really healthy roots. There's a little bit of root rot, but I don't think that was from me. I think that was from person who sent this to me. No shade, just saying. <laughs> With my hanging plants, I do kind of prefer to put them only in sphagnum moss because sphagnum moss is lighter than soil um, and I don't want like the wall or my ceiling to rip off because the pot is too heavy. It also just makes it easier to take on and off to do the waterings. This is the moss that I'm using. I'm going to wet it a little bit. And now I'll just wrap the roots and then place it into here, uh, making sure that they're in contact with the sphagnum moss and being careful not to break the roots because these anthurium roots are really thick and noodle-like and they can snap pretty easily. Ooh, I actually just snapped a root. <laughs> I'm going to put some moss on the bottom of the pot first and around the edges slightly. I have seen some concerns that people have about the wood rotting or like molding and stuff and that isn't really an issue because the wood dries out so quickly. At least for me. I'm angling the plant so it goes a little bit more outwards than up straight. That way the uh, leaves will face this way rather than being like this. It's a small detail, but I really like how it looks like this. I'm really trying to make sure I have a good amount of sphagnum in here. That way it doesn't dry out too fast. This thing is wood and there's a lot of airflow, so it can dry out very fast, but the more sphagnum moss you use, the more um, water it holds. I think it looks pretty cute. So I'm using this wire, um, I believe it's bonsai wire to make a hook. Maybe I'll make it look a little bit nicer though. <laughs> and I just bend it and it forms a pretty nice hook. Hmm. So maybe it's an odd angle for this. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I was originally planning to have it like this, but this is kind of cute. So we'll see how it grows in, I guess. Now I can check off that I finished repotting this and that's kind of one of the most satisfying things with my Notion setup and my to-do list is that there's check mark boxes and like filling in the check mark feels so rewarding. Um, so sometimes I even like put really small tasks on my to-do list just so I can check it off and feel accomplished, like take a shower or give Theo a walk or um, eat breakfast, or eat lunch, I'll just put that on there so I feel satisfied with myself. And I mean, the to-do list is only for me, so I can do whatever I want. So the next thing on my Notion list is to repot my philodendron white wizard. And I really like how this plant looks in this pot. And I planted it in this pot, I think a year ago, and it is extremely shallow, so there isn't very much soil or substrate in here. Instead of putting it in a new pot, I'm just going to uh, take it out of this one and give it new soil. What I'm gonna do is make the soil a little bit less airy, that way the pot doesn't dry out as fast because the ratio of pot and soil to plant is um, really low. There's a low ratio of soil to plant. Yeah, 
That's what I was trying to say. It's been a while since I sat in a classroom. Let's take it out of the pot and see what we're working with. Oh, wow. <laughs> These roots are real. Wow. Oh my goodness. Those roots were wrapped around, 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 around. I don't know if I should leave it in the same pot. I kind of feel bad if I do. This plant is a lot more root bound than I expected. And I feel like some of you guys might get mad at me for this, but I'm actually going to cut these roots off. And I'm doing this because it has healthy roots up here and I don't want this plant to grow any larger. Like I don't want it to get big. Um, I just want it to keep producing leaves and stay more or less this size. And I just don't have room for a really large plant at the moment. Cut. Cut. Maybe I'll leave this a little bit longer. Cut. And then this appears to be a rotted root, so I'll cut that. So it's pretty good and it fits again. And also this won't just be wasted. I'll use this. And this one. And oh my god. <laughs> okay. And this won't all be wasted because I'll use this as food for my worms and it'll just be plant nutrients in the future. I keep my soil out on my balcony in a bin. So I'm gonna go out there and collect some and put it in this uh, container. This is the soil I'm currently using. It's from the brand uh, KIS Organics. I think it stands for Keep It Simple Organics. And I put in a little bit of pumice and a few wood chips in here just to give it a little bit of aeration, but not too much. The soil that I'm using already has uh, organic fertilizer in it and what I really like about it is that they use a really diverse blend of different organic fertilizers which I think is really great because it will more than likely have all the essential macro and micronutrients necessary for my plants. I've also been really interested in soil biology lately and just like the idea of microorganisms and soil organisms interacting with plants and plant roots and I also like not having to fertilize all that often and to keep it simple like the company is called. Also not sponsored or affiliated in any way. I just bought this with my own money. So far, I really like their soil. With a few amendments like pumice or perlite or wood chips, it really is great. And I've seen a lot of success with the plants that I have um, in this soil. Okay, and then whenever I'm repotting my plants, I always give them a good shake to make sure that the roots um, are touching the soil and that the soil settles down. Um, so this is kind of why I always make a mess when I'm repotting and stuff. So that's why this repotting mat is very useful. Normally after I repot, I would take it outside to my balcony and then spray it down. But for the sake of saving time, because I have a couple more plants that I need to repot. I'm just going to spritz it down really quick. Now I can check off the philodendron white wizard. Um, oh, and then I also need to put down the date that I repotted. The 16th, so... And then since the soil has fertilizer in it, I'll also put down that I um, fertilized it as well today. Next on the agenda is to repot the pinguicula that I have in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. So right now they're not really in the best location um, because they're getting covered by other plants and I can't really see them so I want to bring them outside to be able to view them and I also have this very nice um, Hasami porcelain bowl that I can use to grow them in. I have another pinguicula that's been growing on the windowsill. Sphagnum moss on the bottom, live sphagnum moss on top, and then a pinguicula. So that's what I'm going to be doing with the other ones. They're fairly easy to take out of here I think. Um, some of those, got this one. This is reverse osmosis water, by the way, so it doesn't have any minerals in it. I'm making sure that the pinguicular roots are wrapped in sphagnum moss. And I found that these plants are surprisingly resilient, so I'm not too careful when I handle them. I'm gonna kind of spread them out from each other because they do grow more horizontally than vertically, so I don't want them to cover each other. Now I will cover the top with live sphagnum moss 
and that will be it. Just putting on the finishing moss touches to completely cover it with live moss. Voila! Salad. And the dish is prepared. And now we can check that off the notion. Bing. So next I am repotting some of my Hoya, um, but I'm just using the same pot again. They don't need to be repot because they're root bound. I think that I just want to repot them to use my own soil because they're still in the original soil from when I got them. So this is my variegated Hoya Carii and this is my Hoya Crimson Queen. This Hoya was my first Hoya and I got it from a viewer at my first plant swap. And now I'm sort of into Hoya. Uh, so thank you. I am really, really bad with names, but I know I've talked to you before on Instagram. So if you're watching this, thank you. Look how much it's grown. It's in this nursery pot. I believe it's four inch nursery pot, maybe a two inch. I'm not really good with like measurements, just with my eyes. This has drainage holes. And then this one from Ikea doesn't. And this pot was only $2. So it's nice to use these as cover pots for nursery pots because they fit perfectly. And the nursery pot is completely hidden and it works pretty much as a saucer. Normally when I repot into a larger size, I don't really remove the soil like this. I would just pot it in as is but because it's the same size pot and I'm pretty much just wanting to change out the soil, I am removing some of the soil from the roots. Okay, good. And then I'm just gonna do the same with this one. Hmm. This is a really wet soil mixture that this plant has been in. So it looks like it's a mix of turfus and some type of peat moss soil. These two are done. So now that we did the Hoya, let's check those off. Um, the next thing is the Passiflora amalocarpa, which is the vine that I really like that has those butterfly looking wings, or not wings, it has leaves that look like butterfly wings. Right now, I have it in the kitchen. My hopes is for it to climb like, all around here and vine and just like take over the place because I love this plant. I'm just going to place the plant in and then fill it with soil. Looks pretty good. Yeah. So we've completed the Passiflora and um, I'll put it here for now. And as it grows out, I'll attach it onto the cabinet and the wall and the ceiling. And hopefully it'll look very pretty. I think it will. I really, really like that plant. Okay, and now we are repotting my Saracenia, which is a, a pitcher plant, but it's not like Nepenthes, it, it's a pitcher plant. I'll just show you. I don't know, I'm trying to explain it, but I don't know how to explain it. And then I'm also gonna be repotting my Venus flytrap. This is the plant that I was trying to explain to you guys. I don't rem remember the exact species name or anything. I just got the cheapest one available because I just wanted to try. Right now it's just planted in sphagnum moss and previously I was using this pot from Ikea as a catch tray, but I realized that like I could just pot this plant into this fully instead of using it just as a catch tray thing. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. This moss is coming to life, which is pretty cool. I really love when sphagnum moss does that. I have a tutorial on how I grew back live sphagnum moss from dead sphagnum moss, and I've only ever had success with the brand Best Grow, but I did have some kind of rude comments on that video saying that this isn't possible and I'm doing it for clickbait. I didn't think it was possible myself and then I talked to someone who has had it work for them and they're like, oh yeah, just do this and this. And then I did that and it worked and I was very surprised. And I have seen other people be successful with it, but a lot of people did doubt me and say that like this won't work, like this does not work. I'm not gonna say it does work 100% for everyone, but 
it definitely works for some people, myself included, and other people who have tagged me in posts saying, oh, this worked for me. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. I'm just filling this with sphagnum moss. Um, there's no drainage hole on this pot. And also I really like Ikea for their pot selection. Most things are very cheap compared to nurseries and they have very stylish pots. I believe the Saracenia is native to Southern USA. I think like Texas, maybe? I don't know, around there. I always viewed carnivorous plants as being very tropical and exotic, for lack of a better word. It's cool to know that these are native to the United States. So I grow these outside on my balcony. They die back in winter and have a winter dormancy. So that's why you see these crisping up leaves, but I do see some growth points coming soon. I'm really happy that you guys are enjoying videos similar to this where they're longer form and I kind of just like talk about plants and other stuff where I show you guys my plants and I walk around and just share my ideas and my thoughts with you guys. This one is finished. Now I'm gonna do the Venus flytrap. This is currently planted, I think, in peat moss. It's in the same substrate that I got it in from the grower, but I'm gonna put it in sphagnum moss. Oh, there's a little baby one. Wait, can you see it? Look at that little baby. With carnivorous plants, their roots are black and dark like this. So it looks like root rot, but it is not. Um, so if you see that, don't be scared. Also, carnivorous plants don't really have um, much in terms of root systems. Like they're not super robust like you would get with an aeroid. Let me wrap these roots in moss. I chose a white pot for this one because I'm gonna keep this plant on my windowsill for the summer. And um, I chose white so that way it would reflect light and not make the um, moss too hot. Also, I think I'm closing these pictures. Sorry. Uh... I know it takes a lot of energy for them to close. I'm going to put live sphagnum moss on top. I have this tray that I'm using to grow sphagnum moss. It's pretty amazing, <laughs> I think. Whenever I need moss for something like this, I'll just come in and trim off the top. The bottom portion will grow back and then this top portion will also grow and it's just like propagating. Moss ASMR. Ooh. Mossmer. <laughs> um, I accidentally closed a bunch of the pictures, but oh well. Wow. I think this combination looks really nice because of the dark red of the Venus flytrap and then the white of the pot. Um, it's a nice contrast. Something that I do for all of my pots or my saucers is I use these felt stoppers that are adhesive and then I attach them to the bottom of the pot. So that way when I place it onto surfaces, it's more gentle. Okay, I'll give you a demonstration. Right now it doesn't have any of those stoppers. So when I put it down, it sounds like this. You see? And I don't really like that when I'm putting it on like a piece of furniture or on my countertop because I don't want to scratch or damage that. Normally I stick three on, so make a little triangle with them. Okay, and now listen. Can you hear that? It sounds much nicer. I'm getting a lot done in this video. I've been saving all of this stuff for this video actually, so yeah, it's nice to just get everything done that I've been thinking about doing. Now I'm going to repot my variegated bilati that I got from my friend Michael. We traded plants and I feel very blessed to have this plant because it is very difficult to get. So here is the variegated bilati and it is starting to put out a new growth point. It's a pretty slow growing plant. Even the non-variegated one is pretty slow. So the variegated one is gonna be even slower because it has less chlorophyll to photosynthesize with. It's in this small Hisami porcelain pot, um, but I think it's pretty well rooted by now. I am going to repot it into this white Kinto pot. I think it's like a five inch pot. And also the felt stoppers.
very well rooted. It would benefit from a repot, so I'm doing it at a good time, I think. Here are the roots and this very tiny growth point. From the front, the leaves are just pointing in opposite directions. It's like they don't like each other. <laughs> I really like the leaf shape and how the leaves look and how it's variegated. Um, the only thing is that why are they facing away from each other like that? The way that they're separated, they look like Theo when we try to put his harness on. He wants to go on a walk, but he's weird about getting his harness put on him. So when we try to put it on, he's like, like this, just like that plant. The last plant that I'm going to repot right now is my um, silver band Maranta. I got it from my friend Leo. His Instagram is philleodendron. I bet a few of you guys follow him. This is the plant. It's my favorite. Um, variety of these it has silver veining instead of like red or yellow I don't know it's really pretty I'm going to repot it in something I don't know what yet oh maybe this would be nice so the black Hasama porcelain or the blue the black or the blue, the blue. right okay I think I like the blue too Chris said blue so let's do blue I'm just gonna use the same mix that I used before, um, with almost all of my plants, I use the same soil, unless they're grown in sphagnum moss. Um, so right now I'm using the KIS Organics as my base and then amending it with pumice and some orchid bark. But really any potting soil works. It doesn't need to be the KIS Organics. What's important is that you just add a decent amount of aeration through pumice or perlite. And then obviously, have some good fertilizer. So like I said, I've pretty much moved away from using synthetic fertilizers. It's because I really like the idea of using like organic fertilizers and not because it's like organic, but because soil biology that comes along with using organic fertilizer. It's just a lot more hands-off it feels like with synthetic fertilizers, especially the liquid synthetic fertilizers that I was using. I would kind of need to remember like, oh, did I fertilize it this week? I would also need to fill up the watering can with fertilizer. So it was just like a little bit more work than I felt like I needed or wanted to do. Um, and this just works out a lot better for me. With the way that Marantas grow, I'm expecting and hoping that the leaves will come out of the pot and lay flat and point towards the light source. So I imagine it growing like out this way to my right and then having all the leaves face this way. Um, so I think a lot about how the plant is gonna grow when I display them or how I, where I choose to put them or what pot I pot them in. Yeah, that looks cute. I'm happy that we went with the blue. I think it works well with the silver and the green color it has. Now I'm pretty much all done repotting. Yay! So now I'm going to do some trimming in this cabinet. I haven't really done any pruning in the IKEA cabinet, so a lot of the stuff is very overgrown. Things have definitely grown in, but it's hard to say exactly what's different because I do see this thing every single day. So it's been a gradual change for me. I'm going to be removing some overgrown things and dead leaves. Maybe some plants I just don't want anymore. Goodbye. Rest in peace. <laughs> RIP. Because this thing is like so full of plants that even if I remove a bunch of stuff, it's gonna look the same. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this plant. It's an Adansonii that I placed in here, but it's just growing too big. So it's gonna go. Hmm, it's really pretty actually. I feel sad for cutting it. Oh, food for my worms. I think that's all I want to do at the moment. Um, so this is all the stuff I got and it looks the same. <laughs> right now I'm going to use this stuff uh, for my worms and I'm gonna freeze it with my other worm food. Yeah, that's it. 
And hopefully soon I'll be able to harvest these worm castings and use them for my plants. They just haven't had enough time to create enough castings for me to use. So I've been using organic fertilizer from the same brand that I use for my soil. Once again, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I bought the stuff myself. This is the fertilizer. Um, let's see what's in it. Okay, so it says alfalfa meal, fish meal, kelp meal, crustacean meal, fishbone meal, glacial rock dust, oyster shell. Because they're different fertilizers, they probably have different nutrient profiles, which makes me feel confident that this fertilizer will provide my plants all the nutrients they need to grow. So inside it's mostly dust with a few like large bits for plants in pots. Uh, it says to apply it as a top dressing if it's already planted. Um, and they recommend one cup of the fertilizer per 10 gallons of growing media. And I do one tablespoon per gallon. It's always better to under fertilize than over fertilize in my opinion. So even for one gallon of growing media, this seems like a lot. So I don't always do this much per gallon. I'm just going to drizzle some on, agitate the soil on the top slightly so that way it can get worked in after I water it. Some fertilizer for you. So I think I'm just gonna do enough to lightly coat the top of the pot with um, fertilizer. This is my Florida ghost. Fertilizing doesn't really need to be so difficult and this is nice because it's very like hands-off after I fertilize and I think it says that it'll last for six months or maybe a little bit less because it is an organic fertilizer. It does attract animals like this guy because I think it smells good to them or something. Putting some on this monstera. Some on here. Fertilizing this, my Philodendron Domesticum. Now my Philodendron UPI. The ones I'm not doing have already been fertilized or recently repot, so they have enough nutrients in their soil. The winds knocked this over. <laughs> it smells like a barrier. I'm planning to reorganize this balcony soon because uh, it's kind of messy and there's not really too much going on besides a few plants and I kind of don't want so many plants to be on the ground but that is for a future video. I was going to fertilize these plants out here but then I realized that Theo would be able to get with them and mess with the fertilizer so I'm going to wait until I have a better place to put the plants other than being on the ground. Yeah I think I'll end the video here actually. I did a lot of stuff. Fertilize my plants, repot a bunch of plants. I do still have some, a few more things to do, uh, but that can be done in a later day. Once again, thank you so much Notion for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. Theo. Hey. Okay, now you cannot play with this. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs>